where electron can move. Okay, or we can say it revolve around the nucleus in their path. So, and nucleophile having the electron and electrons having the negative charge. So, this is rather for atomic model. Uh, what have uh, according to this model, there are two parts, nucleus and extra nuclear. This is nucleus which contains proton and neutron. And this is extra nuclear part, this is called shell or the energy levels or the orbitals where electron revolve around the nucleus and electron are present and electron having the uh, negative charge. So this is a rather for atomic. From this experiment beside the structure there is a defects of the rather atomic model. Now, according to the classical physics, since the electrons revolving around the nucleus, it should lose energy and it's ultimately fall into the nucleus. Now, first thing, what is the classical physics? Classical physics is a branch of a physics which deal with the update the concept of a modern physics, in which can give the more clarity of the topics and update of the anatomic. So, according to classical physics, electron revolve around the nucleus. Uh, I have already told you, an uh, electron are revolving around the nucleus in their certain allowed path or the orbit, it should lose energy and ultimately fall. It means if they are continuously revolving and the time will come, it will fall on to the nucleus. But this is a defect of the rather for the first effect. Now second defect. If the revolving electron emit energy continuously, if electron are remo uh, revolving, it mean moving like this, and it emit energy continuously, then there would be a continuous spectrum. But in contrast, it we get the line spectrum from the atom. So the first question comes in the mind: What is a spectrum? Spectrum is a, a when a while white light passes through a prism. So white light divided into a seven color. This is called as a spectrum. What is a spectrum? When a light, white light passes through a prism, it spins soon a seven color. This is called a spectrum. Now spectrum are of two types. One is a continuous spectrum and one is a line spectrum. So what is a continuous spectrum? The continuous spectrum, the seven colors cannot be differentiated with one another. So this is known as a continuous spectrum. Then what is a line spectrum? The, uh, the uh, color can be differentiated because of a dark color line or having gaps or a bands mean each color is a differentiated on the basis of a there are a band the band or the dark line is present which differentiate each color so in what happened in the second differ mean there would be a continuous spectrum but in contrast we will get the light and according to rutherford must be the continuous spectrum so but the result come there is a line spectrum means the, the light color we can see with the help of a dark bands these are the two basic defects of the rather for it. Now, after this, Bohr is a scientist who overcome the defects of a rather for atomic model. Now, Bohr's atomic model. In 1930, a Danish physics gave a theory to resolve the defects of a rather for atomic model. Bohr's atomic model is based on the falling point. Neil Bohr adopted the Planck's idea. Planck was a scientist, his idea was the Planck quantum theory and there the energies are quantized. Energies are quantized mean the energies are fixed. Quantized mean fixed. The, he, uh, he proposed that electrons in atom move only in a certain allowed energy level. This is energy space. So an electron in allowed energy state will not radiate energy continuously and therefore will not fall in the nuclear. Um, an electron having their specific and energy level or we can say they having a specific orbit where they rotate it will not move here and there that's why it will not radiate the energy that's why it will not fall in the a second one that the atoms radiate energy as a light only when the electron jump from a higher energy level e2 is a higher energy level to a lower energy level that is a e1 I mean, according to this point, uh, atom can radiate on energy in that condition when electron jump from a higher energy level to lower energy level. The quantity of energy radiated is the discrete quantity called quanta. What is a discrete? Discrete means existing, specific, separate. I mean, it's called a quanta. So, this is a and quantum of energy is a directly proportional to the frequency of the radiation. 
quantum of energy is a directly proportional to the frequency of the wind. What is a frequency? It's a number of oscillation in a particular time period or in a one second. Number of oscillation means moving here from one position to another position. So the number of oscillation in a particular time period that is a one second is called a frequency. Now delta E. This is called delta. Delta is equal to E two minus E one. When we minus uh, the E one from E two, then we will get the delta E. Is equal to H mu. This is not a V. This is a new, 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 new. And you knew what is a new uh, where well, H is a Planck's constant. This is a Planck's constant after the discovery of the Planck's theory. They're having the Planck's constant in values of phase, and that is a new. This is not V. This is a new. This is a frequency of the radiation. So it follows that delta E is equal to E two minus E one. That that is equal to H is new. So H is a Planck constant, and we use the frequency of the radiation frequency. What is the frequency? The oscillation in a particular time period. So this is a about the Bohr atomic model. From this, now move toward the book exercise page number fifty six. We have in the question. How many protons, neutrons, electrons are present in the following atoms? Now our task is to find out the number of a proton, neutron element in a given atom. Now first we having um, nitrogen and uh, mass number is a fifteen and atomic number is a seven. Now first data mass number is a denoted by A capital A and is equal to a fifty. This is fifty. Okay. On the top position is a, um, a mass number that is a 15. Now, then, uh, at, this is a atomic number. It is denoted by capital Z, and it is a, in, in right on a lower position or in the separate that is a cell. Then, we have a number of a protons that is a um, our task is to find out number of electron. We have to find out number of a neutron. So we will find out these three things. But solution according to Definition. What is the atomic number? Atomic number is the number of protons or the electrons in the atom. Okay, this is atomic number. So, number of electron will be a seven because atomic number is equal to number of proton or neutron. So, number of proton is a seven and number of a proton also seven. Now, how we will find the number of a neutron? So, number of a neutron is equal to mass number minus atomic number. When we will mass uh, subtract the atomic number from a mass number, then we will get the neutron. N A is equal to A minus Z. Then we will get uh, A is um fifteen. We are given here and minus seven. Then we will get the A. So now neutron is a A. So this is the first, second one. Cobalt having the atomic uh, mass number is a sixteen. Atomic number is a twenty-seven. Mass number here A sixteen. Atomic number is a twenty-seven. Uh, we have to find a number of electron, number of neutron, number of a proton, and now solution again. Atomic number is uh, is denoted by Z is equal to number of proton and number of a neutrons. So number of proton is twenty seven, number of electron proton both are twenty seven, and number of neutron is equal to mass number minus atomic number. So that is a A minus Z sixty minus twenty seven. We will get the thirty three. So now next uh, iodine. We having mass number one thirty one and atomic number is fifty three. Number of electrons, number of a neutron, and number of a proton we will find out. Now solution: atomic number is equal to that denoted by Z. Number of a neutron is equal to number of a proton. So number of electron is fifty three and number of proton also fifty three. Now number of a neutron we will find mass number minus atomic number. So Uh, that is a uh, n is equal to a minus z and one thirty one minus fifty three. Then we will get the seventy uh, eight. So seventy eight is a number of a neutrons of a iodine. Number of protons are fifty three. Number of electrons are fifty three. And now num nit uh, we having the nitrogen that uh, sorry neutron having the seventy eight. So next. Uh, we having PV two two zero seven and eight uh, is a uh, mass number um, mass number and that is atomic number eighty two. So atomic number is eighty two, and number of electron, neutron, and proton we will find out with help of the formula. Atomic number is equal to number of a neutron and proton. So number of neutron is eighty two, number of proton is eighty two, and 
uh, and we will find the number of a neutron uh, mass number minus atomic number. So 207 minus 82, then we will get the 125. Uh, so the number of a neutron is 125. Now, now this is all about the chapter three. Now we are starting the chapter six. Uh, chapter six is related to the states of a matter. Okay. Before going to into the kinetic molecular theory, we must know what is a matter. Anything which having uh, occupies and having weight and occupies space is called uh, a matter. So, uh, and then come toward the kinetic molecular theory. What is a kinetic? Kinetic is a it's a Greek word which means moving. So, a uh, kinetic molecular theory we having the uh, points. First is a Matter is a composed of a tiny particles which are called molecules. Okay, matter is a made up of a tiny particle which are called molecules. This is a very simple point. Number two, the molecules of a matter are in motion. The, the molecules of a matter, the molecules present in the matter, they are always in a motion. They are motion and they are moving. These molecules having the kinetic energy due to their motion. Uh, so uh, we, I have already told you that the meaning of a kinetic is a moving. They are a moving, so they are moving. That's why they having the what type of energy? They having the kinetic energy. The force of attraction present between the particles of solid, liquid, and gas are called cohesive force. So the force of attraction, the uh, what is the force of attraction? The uh, the attraction between the opposite charge is the force of attraction, which is a present between solid, liquid, and gas are called cohesive force. So this is the third point and fourth, well, this fourth point and the fifth point, the three states of matter solid, uh, are, that is a solid, liquid and gas of a matter depend upon the arrangements, arrangement of uh, atoms, maybe molecules, motion, what type of their motion, they either have a stationary movement, vibrational, they are moving back and forth, maybe they are moving here and there are different types of uh, motions and force of attraction between these particles means force of attraction are present between these and so three states of matter depend upon the three things arrangement of atom or, or molecule motion or type of a motion they having and the force of attraction present between them now three states of matter on the basis of a kinetic theory the kinetic theory tells about the way particles mean atom or molecules move about in the solid liquid and gases now number one solids Solids have definite shape and a definite volume. Mean they having a fixed shape and a fixed volume. Uh, according to their power, particles are packed closely together with a strong attractive force between them. So they are tightly packed. So they having they have uh, in, in between their molecules there is no gap. So they having the strong attractive force between them. They have a smaller amount of energy. This is a very simple point. They vibrate about their fixed position only. They, do, uh, they are not able to move here and there. They move only in a fixed position. So these are the basic character of a solid on the basis of a kinetic theory. Now liquids. Liquids do not have a fixed shape. They don't have a proper shape. They take the shape of a container if, in which they are kept. I mean, what type of a vessel, container, or operator apparatus are we are using? Uh, the liquid gives the shape according to that. They have a definite volume, but they don't have the fixed shape, but they have a definite volume. They, they are only slightly compressible and attraction between the particle is weaker than in solid. Therefore, can move freely around each uh, other in a fixed volume. So, they are slightly compressible. Compressible means to compressible mean they to compress, to suppress, to uh, re reduce. Okay. So, there is the force of attraction is a weaker as compared to solid. That's why they are freely move here and here. Now, gases. Gases do not have definite shape or definite volume. They don't have the fixed shape and volume. Molecules of gas have very large space between them. The gases are compressible because the particles of gas are spaced well, but they are present very far from each other. That's why they are easily compressed. The attractive force between the gas particles are very strong. Uh, force of protection have solid, then less and very less in a gas. Now, from this, now moving to the next topic, interconversion of our three states. Now, first thing is a melting point. The temperature at which solid starts melting is called a melting point. This is a simple definition of a melting point. The solid starts melting, that is a melting point. An example, we have in the ice, that is a zero degree centigrade. This is an example of a melting point. The second term, we have in the sublimation. 
some solids upon heating instead of uh, changing into a liquid state are uh, converted in directly into a gaseous or vapor state this process is called sublimation example we having iodine ammonium chloride hanapethylene on heating directly converts into a gaseous state from a solid state mean uh, so we having the solid we are heating is directly changed into a gaseous form or a vapor form it is not changed into a liquid this type of uh, process is known as a sublimation it occurs in iodine ammonium chloride and ethylene they are directly changed from solid into a gaseous state this is sublimation now fusion the rise in the temperature used to change the state from a solid to a liquid is called a fusion so uh, means we are rising the temperature we are requiring a temperature or increasing the temperature the state of matter change is changed from a solid to liquid so this is called fusion to fuse something that is a fusion now we having evaporation when liquid is heated mean you start heating a liquid the kinetic energy of a liquid molecule increases due to increase of a kinetic energy certain molecules start escaping from the surface of liquid this escape of a molecule is called evaporation mean escaping of a molecule from the surface of a liquid is simply we can call evaporation in biology you have also may you may also learned about the evaporation evaporation occur in plants okay to a stomata so they uh, you can take the example of evaporation Uh, sea water evaporates, and one thing more important, evaporation takes place in all temperatures. Now, next we having boiling point. Uh, what is the boiling point? Uh, the at a certain temperature, the vapor pressure of a liquid becomes equal to the external pressure, and this temperature liquid starts boiling. This temperature is called boiling point. or simply we can say in simple word we can say the temperature at which liquid starts boil it is called boiling point now question come in the mind and very important and common example what is the boiling point of a water the boiling point of a water is 100 degree centigrade at 100 degree centigrade water start boiling so this is the boiling point of a water now we have another term vaporization the condition in which the rise in the temperature is used to change the state from a liquid to gas this change is called a vaporization mean we are giving the temperature or increasing the temperature then there is a change in a state of state of a matter from a liquid to a gas change from liquid to gas this change is called vaporization so this is all about the interconversion of three states of a matter now we move another term diffusion what is the term diffusion this is diffusion now our first definition the spread uh, sub, uh, spreading of a substance through a medium like air or liquid is called diffusion what is called diffusion means spreading of a substance the so substance are spreading or in other words we can say diffusion can be defined in other words the movement of a molecule from a region of a higher concentration to a lower concentration this or we can say the spontaneous or a natural mixing of a particles of a matter so we can define in a different way the simple one is a the spreading of a substance through the medium like air or a liquid is called diffusion now uh, we will discuss diffusion of a gases first uh, grams law grams giving the law about the diffusion of a gases introduction of the grams thoms grams a scottish chemist studied the rate of a diffusion of a different gases and formulated the grams law for diffusion in 1846 so grams give the law uh, for diffusion so called as the gram of law for diffusion now statement the rate of diffusion of gas is inversely proportional to the square root of the molar mass or the density the rate of a diffusion of a gas inversely proportional to the square root of a its molar mass or density. we can see C in the form of a formula. Okay, R is the rate of a diffusion of a gas inversely proportional. Inversely, this is showing the inversely proportional relation, and it's a square root. This is a square root of a molar mass. It is denoted by m. At this here, m is a molar mass. Okay, and or we can say rate of diffusion is inversely. This is inversely proportional to the uh, density. This is a density. We are using density. 
What is the density? The mass per unit volume means weight occupying specific volume that is uh, or per unit volume that is called as a density. So Graham's giving the statement that the rate of diffusion is there inversely proportional to the square root of the molar mass or density. Or we can say if molar mass increases, the rate of diffusion decreases. Uh, it's an inverse. If a rate of diffusion increases, so molar mass will be decreased. So the same like in air density, this is all about the law of our diffusion of a gas, which is given by Graham. Now next topic, uh, again diffusion, and we have a diffusion in liquids. Okay, a liquid. Liquid is an intermediate between the gases and the solid state. We all know that there are three states of matter, solid, liquid and gas, but liquid is an intermediate between gases and the solid state. So like gas, liquid molecules are able to move and thus flow and diffuse. So like a gas, uh, liquid molecules are also able to diffuse. Uh, the rate of movement of a liquid molecule is a smaller than gases, hence they diffuse slower than gases. So we can say gases move or diffuse faster as compared to liquid. Now uh, consider example, for example, we have add two or three drops of a blue ink in a two ml of a water in a beaker. Take a beaker and drink the two, uh, 200 ml of a water, add two or three drops of a blue ink. What happened? It seems that the blue color of ink spreads slowly in a water and the whole water become a bluish after some time. It means that diffusion also occur in a liquid, but the rate of diffusion in liquid is slower than gas. You can take um, uh, any type of drink you are making, like a jamishiri, take um, uh, water and uh, dissolve in with the uh, jamishiri, you will get the same result like a blue ink. So this experiment, or if you can take this uh, example of a daily life, proves that the rate of diffusion of liquid is uh, slower than the gases. Now, move toward the next. Brownian movement. What is the Brownian movement? First, uh, we having the introduction about the scientists who discovered the Brownian movement. This property was the first of all observed by British botanist. What is a botanist who studied the botany? What is a botany? Botany is a tree of a plant. Robert Brown in 1827 during the movement of a pollen grain in a water by a microscope. Under the microscope, he observed the movement of a pollen grains. Now, after the observation of a pollen grains, we come toward the, uh, forward the statement. A continuous, rapid, zigzag motion of a suspended particle through the medium is called Brownian motion. Mean a continuously they are moving, continuously they are moving in a zigzag motion like this and this. The zigzag motion, a suspended particle, the particle present in a medium, this is called a Brownian motion. Simply we can say zigzag motion. Zigzag motion is a Brownian motion. Now, take the example. Mix some powder sulfur in a water and say, take a beaker and mix some sulfur powder and uh, add the water and stir it. After stirring, you filter the suspended part. Take the, use the filter paper and filter it. Some of the sulfur particles are very small and they can pass through the pores of a filter paper into a filtrate. Uh, but some do not. Put a drop of this filtrate on a slide and example it under a high powered microscope. It is observed that the sulfur particles perform rapid random zigzag motion through a medium and this motion is called Brownian motion. What is it? I'm repeating the example. Take a beaker, add some sulfur powder and water and stir it. After stirring, use the filter paper and filter it. Uh, what happened in the filtration? Some of the uh, sulfur particles are very small. They can pass through the pores of filter paper into a filtered, but some particles remain on the filter paper. So now our task start from here. So uh, we will take a drop of this filtrate on a slide and examine it under a high powered microscope. We are using the microscope, but we are having the high power, so it is called a high powered microscope. Then what will be our observation? The observation that Particle perform a rapid uh, random zigzag motion through the medium, and this motion is called Brownian motion. So, this is all about the uh, Brownian motion. So, Brownian motion or, or movement was uh, come forward with the help of examples and experiments of a 
uh, Robert drawn in 1827 and statement is a, a continuous rapid zigzag motion of a suspended particle through a medium is called Brownian motion. So Brownian gives the concept about the rapid zigzag motion of a suspended particle. So and it is very clear from this example in which we take the beaker, add sulfur and water, stir it and filter it and some particles are passed through the pore of the filter into filtrate and we will take the drop of a filtrate and examine, uh, examine under high power microscope and it is observed that sulfur particles perform rapid random zigzag motion through which medium and this motion is called Brownian motion or we can say this is a, all about the Brownian movement. Okay. Now we are having the home task. This home task is related to the chapter 3 atomic structure. First question, write down the two points of a Bohr atomic model. It's present on slide number 7. Uh, you will write as it is from the slide. Explain Rutherford experiment and write down the effects of Rutherford atomic model. Okay. Uh, you can get the answer from slide number four to six. Uh, complete experiment uh, with headings and defects are also on slide number six. Then we yeah, having question number three. Complete exercise. Uh, there's a blanks, MCQs, and all question answered on a page number fifty-four and fifty-six in your book. So, beside this question, you must complete your exercise based questions in your fair copy as well as blanks and MCQs. So please take a screenshot of that home task site. Now we are having task of a home task of a chapter number six. Um, write down five main points of our kinetic molecular theory. You can take the help from the site number 13. Second question, state Graham's law for diffusion. You can get help from site number 17. Now question number three, define Brownian movement with one example. Uh, slide number 19, you can take help from this. Question number four, define the following terms. Slide 15 and 16, you can take the help from slide number 15 to 16. Number one term, melting point, two boiling point, evaporation, four sublimation, five vaporization, six one is a fusion. And question number five is complete MCQs and the blanks in your group exercise and all question in your copy from page number uh, 102 to 103. So this is a home task of uh, chapter number six. Please take a screenshot and complete in your fair copy. You can take the help from book as well as from these slides and complete your home task. This is all about uh, today's lecture.